Hi there. Uh, thank you for your interest in Inuit.css. Uh, I'm Harry, uh, the creator of Inuit CSS. Uh, I'm going to show you through a real quick um, way of getting set up uh, with Inuit on, a, on an Inuit CSS-based project. Um, we're going to create an imaginary project for a company called Foo Corporation. And if we have a look, um, we've already got a, a directory structure like this. We've got the Foo Corporation website, we've got the home page, an image directory, and a CSS directory. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go and grab Inuit. So let's head to the Inuit CSS project page, grab the git URL, uh, and then we're going to just um, clone this into this CSS directory. So git clone Inuit CSS into CSS. Oh, uh, okay then, uh, let's have a look. Uh, CSS, uh, rm CSS. It's not empty. Let's have a look. Uh, well, rm minus rf CSS. Right. So now let's try that clone again. Okay, so uh, this normally takes a while. Um, my internet seems quite flaky at the moment. So basically, Inuit CSS works um, like this. We've got your project.scss here. Now that gets renamed to whatever your current project is. So ours will be called foocorporation.scss. This file includes um, a load of variables that we can use to change font sizes, font uh, styles if we like, we can set brand colours, we can set our brand border radius, uh, and then it includes Inuit.css, which is rammed full of different types of partials, um, like uh, object abstractions, uh, generic things like mix-ins, and, and so on. Now the bit that the Inuit CSS project page doesn't show you is the third bit. Um, the third bit is your theme style sheets, the bits that add your project specific styling. And that's what we're going to create now. Right, so um, we've cloned that into CSS. If we go into CSS, we should find it puts us, yeah, we've got a git repo in there. We don't want that. So once again, we'll um, remove the git repository. We don't want this. Um, we want the project as a whole under version control, not just the uh, CSS directory. Um, so we're in the Foucault website. Um, so here we can see now we've got our next page, uh, image directory, and uh, CSS directory. Um, go back in CSS, and we should find this. So we don't need the README. Um, no, we do need everything else in there. Uh, so let's go and have a look. Um, the CSS file. Brilliant. So um, we need to do a bit of housekeeping then. So uh, let's just pop into the Foo Corporation directory. Um, we'll start using git. Um, okay, brilliant. So um, let's go into the CSS directory again. And let us uh, let's just pop open a new tab. It's not showing my current branch, which I don't particularly like. Um, maybe it doesn't show it until my first commit. So. Um, Let's get this added. Right, we're good to go there. We can see we're on the master branch now. Um, let's just play it safe. Let's create a setup branch. Cool. Um, Right, so yeah, housekeeping then. So we don't want it to be called your project.css. Uh, we want to call it um, your project.css. We want to call it um, foo.scss because we're building a site for Foo Corporation. So we can see that it's changed to Foo. The next thing we need to do is um, we need to alter the contents of our watch file. The watch file is a simple bash script which allows us to. Um, so really easily, really quickly watch our um, our style sheets without having to pass in SAS commands. Uh, this was built by um, some guy, I think it's Bradley Few is his name. Um, he built this for us, he submitted it as a, a pull request to the Inuit project, and it's really awesome, I'm really enjoying using it. That one's commented out, we won't bother changing that one for now. Um, so we're going to watch foo.scss, um, and then foo min.scss, that looks correct to me, right quit that. Um, brilliant, so now if we um, 
head over here and cd into the CSS uh, and we can do sh watch dot sh now we should start watching our style sheet so that looks like it's gone quite well um, right next thing um, so we'll edit the index page um, so on seven we'll say um, welcome to Foo Corporation cool and then uh, here yes obviously we want to change this to um, foo.min.scss uh, don't recommend you those just for the time being um, and now we'll have a big h1 foo corporation uh, expect typos uh, I'm doing this quite fast so save that now let's go and have a look at this home page um, Okay, there we go. Uh, that's worked. Let's just check the Inuit CSS is working. Let's um, fire up a new tab and we'll edit our um, variables file. And what we'll do is we'll find the H1, which is there on line 46. Uh, and we'll change that 36 to, um, let's go mad, let's say 96. We'll watch some output over here on the right hand side. Um, I believe it's going slow because I'm watching, uh, I'm, I'm recording the entire screen. Normally it doesn't happen as slowly as that. Um, there, brilliant. So we know everything's hooked up. We've got Inuit CSS in and it's working. Uh, let's undo that. Um, write that and we can pop back out of there. And we go back here and it should be fine. Uh, well, let's wait for a, there we go, look. So we've got everything set up. Inuit CSS is running, it's working. The next thing we need to do then is start adding our theme style sheet. We know Inuit works. The next thing is to start creating um, our theme directory. So um, let's just see what we change there. Uh, oh, okay. We don't want that in. Uh, we'll just create a quick git ignore file. And we'll say we don't want any of those. Um, hopefully. Alright, check the get status. Right, and we've got loads of stuff there. So um begin project setup. So we've set up, we've got our git ignore in there, um, we've got Inuit CSS, we've verified it's working. Next, let's have a look at the directory structure again. We've got the CSS uh, directory, image directory, and the, um, the home page. Let's just nip into that CSS directory. And we'll look at the directory structure there again. So uh, Inuit.css is a directory which contains a framework. We need a directory to contain our, um, our theme styles. So what we'll do is we'll just make a directory called uh, foo. Uh, it does seem quite repetitive to have foo over and over again, but um, at least this way we, we know it pertains to this particular project. Um, and inside foo, we're going to have uh, our base style sheet, the one that's going to set up our HTML element, our, our font uh, style on the HTML element. So we'll create foo slash base. In fact, we're going to call it underscore base.scss. Anyone familiar with uh, SAS will know that the underscore prevents SAS from creating a, um, a matching CSS file. It, we just want to create one CSS file, which will be foo.min.scss. The underscore prevents SAS from creating a base.css and a vars.css. So base.css, what we're going to do is we're going to say HTML. Uh, we'd like you to be uh, font family sans serif and uh, we'll give you a padding equivalent to our base spacing unit. Anyone familiar with Inuit CSS already will know that we have a variable um, called base spacing unit uh, which I'll just open for you here. If we open our variables file 
So uh, you'll see on line 22, we've got base line height. We reassign that uh, on line 35 to base spacing unit. So your base line height is the same as your base spacing unit. Um, so we head back to here um, and we'll write that. We go have a quick look at our index file and we'll have to wait for. Ah, oh, now of course, uh, rookie mistake. So let's nip into here, we'll quit that. Um, let's open up um, uh, foo.scss. And this, you'll see line 22, tells us where we start importing things, which is what we need to start doing. So at import, and if we just go and uh, verify things uh, here, if we just pop up a new tab, um, so yeah, we created a directory called foo, and in foo we've got base.scss, so if we import foo slash base, we can start pulling in our theme style sheet. So if we head to our Ruby tab in this terminal window, we should get some output any second now. There we go. Uh, so there, a padded sans serif page. Now. Uh, what else might we want to do? Um, well, let's think. Uh, well, it's pretty much up to you at this point. Um, we can carry on going. We could create base.css. We might want um, we want our own sort of terminal window, for, uh, our own um, pop up a new terminal window, sorry, and create in there. Um, a footer or a header file. And we could say um, dot header color red. We head back to our index page. We can have um, let's have a look. We go back into our foo.scss, head to the bottom, and now we'll begin including header. Again, we wait for some output in our Ruby tab that's watching uh, SAS here. Uh, there we go. I think it's taken a while because I'm watching the screen. So now everything in the header has gone red. So, uh, yeah, have a quick look at our directory structure then. In the CSS file, in the CSS directory, we have our variables file, which we define several things in. And then we have um, the foo directory. We have foo.min.css, which is the one that we're pointing to in our uh, index.html look. Uh, foo.min.css is created by foo.css calling vars, then the framework, and then our theme stuff. Uh, okay, let's just go and try adding a um, a paragraph to um, the page. Uh, I'm just going to fire up one of my trusty go-to little tools, htlipsum.com. We'll grab ourselves a paragraph, if and when it loads. All right, we've now got a paragraph in our clipboard. Uh, paste that in there. Save that. Uh, okay, uh, now that looks a little large, that doesn't look particularly pleasant to me. So what we do is we just pop up and um, we'll pop up in the variables file. Now we can set up our base font size uh, here on line 21, and 16 looks a little large to me. So um, let's go and change that to... Um, Change that to 12, and this to um, 18. Again, we'll whip some output on our SAS tab. Never normally takes this long, I would blame the uh, screen recording. So, there, looks much nicer. Right, the page itself shrunk as well. 
So our base spacing unit is now 18. So if we look at the padding on the HTML element, we should see it's 18 pixels. Um, oh, some day today. So there we go. Uh, just to experiment completely, uh, let's change that 18 to something uh, more like. Let's go back to 24. Save that. Now our line height will be massive, but um, our padding will uh, increase again around the side of the page. Um, so yeah, the line height, if we've got a base font size of 12 and a base line height of 24, we'd expect the line height of this paragraph to be 2. Oh, my phone's going off there. Silence that. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, the margin bottom is 24 pixels, that's a base spacing unit. The line height should also be 24 pixels. Um, look at the computer slide. So the line height is 24, margin bottom is 24. Everything's based on this um, base spacing unit we set in the um, in the variables file. Uh, so that's you up and set on uh, on Inuit CSS. So if we just fire back to um, food.scss, uh, you can see exactly how it works. We import our variables which we were just tinkering with. Then we import the framework. Um, this is uh, the stuff obviously that I write. This is the objects and abstractions, the things you kind of leverage, the things that uh, you build on top of. And then you have your project named directory, uh, in this case Foo, for Foo Corporation. Uh, and you import the individual components there. This all compiles into one minified style sheet. So, um, yeah, let's just pop and see what's going with that. Git. Git status. Uh, well, let's go back to the project root. So here we can see we've changed quite a bit. We've also added the entire foo directory. So we'll commit that with a message of... Um, oh, sorry. Add all that and commit it with a message of... Begin adding theme styles. Right, lovely stuff. Uh, we're now all set up on Inuit and we'll just go flip out of term, we'll go back to Finder, have another glance over the directory structure. So yeah, Foo Corporation, got the home page, an image directory here, and the CSS directory is where it's all at. Um, Foo.min.scss, this is the one that concatenates all the um, imported style sheets. Uh, in order, they are variables.scss then Inuit CSS, and then uh, all the stuff inside the Foo directory. That all gets um, imported, uh, pre-processed, concatenated, and then minified into um, foo.min.css. And that all happens uh, every time you hit save. Um, and it's a real nice way of working. I find that splitting stuff out, if you work on a particular large project, Foo itself might contain more directories. So you might have a, a directory called... Uh, um, home page in there, you know, if, you, if you're working on a particularly big site, you might have to go even more granular. Um, so yeah, that's it, that's basically setting up a project on Inuit CSS. Um, couldn't be simpler than that. If you'd like any more advice or help, um, well, here's the um, Inuit CSS project uh, on GitHub, uh, and also the Inuit CSS Twitter account, I monitor that quite uh, quite eagerly, so if anyone tweets at that, needs any advice, any help, I'd be more than happy to uh, walk you through some stuff. But um, yeah, I hope that's cleared up a few things, and I hope you all enjoy using Inuit. Thank you very much.